It's Carter Sports back. And today, we finna talk about a big defensive tackle who came to visit USC June 7th. So let's go. And if you been here before, can you please hit that like, please? And if you ain't subscribed, boy, you better subscribe. Trojan family, Trojan gang, fight on forever is in the building. And today, entering into the chat, we got Randy out of Requa, out of Miami Central Florida, a big time prospect, right? Sitting at 6'4, 275 pounds. Like I said, you might see some reports where say he's 6'3, 250. Nah, that means, oh, that, that, that's not updated. He's sitting at 6'4, 275 right now. And let me tell you what some of the recruits said about this kid. With some of the um the talent evaluators, you know, from these recruiting sites, some of these analysts, let me tell you what they said about seeing him play live for the first time. But they played against um who they play against down there in Miami. I don't want to get this wrong. How how you Oh, Kyle Vanguard. They had a game against Ocala Vanguard, which had a lot of D1 talent. It was D1 talent or over the field. So all the top analysts and recruits was at the game to see what these top talented players do for them, uh, do in this game against other talented players. And this was one scout said, seeing it at a Rika live for the first time, he was impressive for multiple viewpoints. The frame says big time future college defensive tackle. He was no place near completely filled out at 6'4", 250 pounds. Now, see, this was last year. He up to 275 now, right? He said long-term Adarika will be 280 pounds, no problem. Combining that projection with a player that absolutely hustles and goes all out, then his natural power and change of direction skills, he's a big time recruit. He definitely liked Adarika's shock and pull move as well. He physically removed multiple Vanguard offense alignments out his way. I can pull and stack and share ability is off the charts. And you see that watching this kid film. He shared blocks, swim out of box easily, right? Tossing players out the way. Strong kid, a strong core. The Florida native finished his junior season with 27 tackles, but 16 tackles for loss in 11 sacks, right? Plus a fourth fumble. He's explosive and athletic and agile for a player 275 pounds who was very quick with his first step, lightning. His versatility and relentlessness as a pass rusher will help him at any program and any scheme in the country. USC need high defensive impact players at any position, but especially on the defensive line. The Trojan have been the Trojans have to be imposing and forceful enough up front in the four that they can limit opposing Big Ten offenses and increase the margin of error for USC offenses. USC played the past two seasons in 2022 and 2023 trying to win games 52 to 49. The Trojans need to move to playing a style in which they are able to win games 24-17 or you know 34-24. Getting high-end defensive players such as Adarika can give USC a very timely, important boost. You know what I'm talking about? So this kid is definitely what we need. Talent, athletic, and strong in the trenches. His strength and agility and moves combinations, he reeks five-star, right? He reeks five star so expect his rating to go up and up and i expect him to do more damage out on that field in this senior season 
He playing at Miami Central with another kid we recruiting, right? Floyd Bucard. So it's going to be interesting to see them two cause up wreck in the middle. Bucard is coming up there. So that should help Adarika not face as many double teams, right? So once Floyd Bucard, once he get up there with him, they both should be able to eat and we gonna be able to see Adarika's stats rise and see him dominating. And I guarantee you, he gonna get a higher rating because he was double teamed a lot. He playing down there at Miami Central. That school is, is one of the top steer schools. I remember they played Bishop Gorman, what, like a year ago or something like, in, in, in Vegas, they went to Vegas. So they one of them schools that play in a tough division and play the toughest teams, right? So I finna really see what he gonna be able to do once Bucard get up there next with him. Won't face some double teams. This kid gonna be able to eat, right? And you can see it, he already got technique. He already got skill. So I will be excited to see what Coach Henney could get out this kid and, and you know the development but that this kid could come with and his potential is through the roof and we need them tackles. We good at edge, right? We got a lot of edges on the team. In this class, we got Isaiah Gibson. We got uh, Hayden Lowe, even though he's more like a defensive end. But as far as on the inside, we need more guys on the inside. And this kid will be important to that. His teammate, Bucard, will be important to that. So, we got to get these tackles, Mal Malik Autry, right? So I've been focused on the tackle because I feel like we good on the outside. It's about getting them beef eaters on the inside that gonna command and draw double teams for our edge can eat and we can put the stuff to that run game. You can't run the ball down our throat. You hear me? So Randy Adarika, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Hopefully we get the correct pronunciation when he commit to USC, right? It gives somebody an interview and, and we can find out. But until then, man, it's Carter Sports. I'ma keep bringing y'all these recruits that USC is trending for, that kids that didn't visit USC and said something glowing about the June 7th trip, right? The June 7th trip, every recruit left with a positive and great feeling. Every recruit could see themselves at USC and feel like USC is a good choice. Every recruit, USC, gave something to think about. You hear me? But until then, man, it's your boy Carter Sports. It's Trojan City. It's USC. So let's go.